Recently, Wayfinder announced some huge changes to their game. They took away live service and they made it a co-op looter game with the ability to play offline. They took all of the stuff that they had designed for microtransactions and they put it in the world in chests, as boss rewards, and as loot drops. Ultimately, when they first described it, the game sounded and looked a lot like the Borderlands formula. And after 25 hours of playing the new update, I can confirm that it is exactly that, with a few key differences. But before that, I did want to talk a little bit about today's video sponsor. These sponsors help me keep making videos and help pay the bills, which allows me to continue doing YouTube. So I appreciate each and every one of you for checking these out as they come up. Are you a fan of Stranger Things, MMOs, and shooters? Well, if so, you need to check out Once Human, a new game launching on July 9th that sends players into a weird world where they need to survive a 256 square kilometer map full of monsters, loot, and boss fights. Now the game is currently number 10 on Steam wishlist, has over 370,000 Discord members, and is still growing. So add it to your Steam wishlist and pre-download the demo now so you're ready to play from June 10th to June 17th. Now I've played the previous betas and the game being, honestly has me hooked. It's a really, really fun experience from building my own base to chasing down specific loot blueprints, all while following along with a really kind of strange story that reminds me a lot of HP Lovecraft. So with all of this said, I'll be jumping in at launch because frankly, it's been really, really fun. So make sure to pre-download the demo on Steam now and add Once Human to your wish list. Like I mentioned, they will be opening a demo on June 10th, where if you play for three hours, you can earn exclusive in-game rewards. And for the mobile gamers out there, head out to the App Store or Google Play Store to pre-register. So Wayfinder Echoes, the new update that converts it into a co-op game, is coming out for non-founders on June 11th for PC whereas founders have been able to play this update since the 31st of May on PC. For me, I immediately jumped back in and fired up Silo, my go-to character. He's a ranger, has a lot of traps, very cool to play as. Now, the tutorial and the introduction to the game is the same. You are found within the gloom, which is sort of Wayfinder's evil darkness taking over the world, and you're pulled out by Omen, a powerful character who lives in the town hub of Skylight. Now, once out in the world, you're going to follow an interesting enough story that sends you beyond the city walls and into the surrounding areas where you'll need to face off against goblins, slime creatures, elementals, and gloomlings, among others. So let's go ahead and let's start, let's start there. Wayfinder is a wonderfully artistic game that reminds me a ton of Wildstar. I've talked about this often. The vibrant color palette matched with the high fantasy meets sci-fi theme just melts together incredibly well. The areas that you're exploring have verticality. You're going to find hidden basements and towering cliffs, all packed with loot, resources, and enemies. So as you're going out and about, you wanna be sure to explore thoroughly and leave no stone unturned because you can find cosmetic boxes. This is where you're going to find different gear pieces. You're going to find different mounts, saddles, things to equip to your actual heroes, different backgrounds, cosmetic things. You'll also be able to find actual gear and things like that out in the world now. So before it was all tied to different vendors where you had to find crafting materials and make everything. Now you can actually get excited and find things in chests or by completing puzzles. Now the enemies that call this world home are pretty manageable in the beginning. They offer little to no resistance as you basically just blast and slash your way through their ranks. However, as time passes, they become stronger and they learn new tricks to keep you on your toes or frozen in them with crowd control effects. Now most of the challenge comes in the form of world events or boss battles. World events are formerly events that would take two or more players in order to clear them, but with the update, these are much more realistic. You're able to view a countdown timer on your map and then make your way over to them to kick things off. These events are pretty simple and straightforward, things like destroying a meteorite as you're ambushed by enemies, ultimately summoning a boss, fighting large world bosses that are out and about, or defending an area. All of them will give you decent rewards once completed. 
Now, world boss battles are normally found at the end of a world event, or like I mentioned, a roaming boss sort of out and about that you can find out in the world. These are typically more challenging since they do have mechanics, crowd control, and they'll summon groups of minions that you have to deal with. Now, even with all of that, the difficulty I'm playing on, which is normal, provides a good balance of challenge and reward. I never felt like things were overwhelming or outside of my control. Now, combat in Wayfinder is a pretty fairly enjoyable thing still. The gunplay is dialed in and the melee feels weighty and has good feedback. Each character has four skills they can use, including an ultimate. Now, these will unlock over time as you gain levels and are able to be upgraded as you earn skill points. Each upgrade will net you more power or will add additional effects to your skills, making them incredibly efficient. Melee and range both seem fairly balanced in terms of pros and cons. While I tend to lean more towards ranged, I also had a good time with Grindel and Kairos in the melee department. Now what I don't like, and this is what Wildstar had as well, is the ice skates movement system. The characters sort of glide as they move and it feels a little wonky before you get used to it. You'll end up overshooting gaps or falling off of the side of like a cliff or if you're trying to do a jumping puzzle, you might slide a little bit and you'll fall to your death. Now, does it affect combat? Not really. Most of the time things are on a kind of even ground, but it definitely has a feeling that you need to get used to. So let's talk about those characters and their development a little bit. So when you first start the game, you're going to have access to three characters, Wingrave, Nis, and Silo, which are essentially tank, ranged, and rogue. And over time, you're going to find or earn character echoes that'll allow you to unlock new characters, each with their own level, affinities, and progression system. Meaning you can have a level 10 Wingrave while Silo and Nis will remain at level one. From here, you can also awaken characters to increase their base stats and skills to in order to give you a little bit more oomph or depth between each character. Now these awakening requirements do differ between characters as well. One will require a certain material while others will require different ones. But that's not all you have. You also have affinities and talent trees. So affinities are groupings of stat bonuses where you can invest affinity points. These will increase certain stats, and as you grow those stats, that particular affinity will also increase weapons and echoes with a matching affinity. For example, if you spend all of your points in focus, any weapon or echo that has focus will also have their stats increased, and this is by a multiplier. This promotes focusing on certain affinities for certain characters. Then we have Talent Trees. Talent Trees are a new addition to the game that lets players level up their Wayfinder rank, earning points along the way. Now this tree is very much a condensed version of the Path of Exile skill tree. You have three different directions you can go, unlocking minor nodes along the way to unlocking major ones. Minor nodes will increase stats a little bit, whereas major nodes will provide large gameplay changes. Now, outfitting your character has gotten a huge facelift in this version of the game. Like I mentioned, weapons are now random drops that'll roll with random echo slots, which this is sort of the chase affix now. You want to find the weapon that you like with the right echo slot that'll allow you to take advantage of the echoes that you've collected. Now, while I was hoping to see randomized weapon stats like weapon power, break power, resilience, the echo slots are a nice touch, but in the future, I would like to see them expand this a little bit more. Now, armor used to be cosmetic. It used to be something you either unlocked or you purchased from the cash shop, but it's now random drops as well, and once equipped, you'll gain a stat bonus. And if you manage to collect a complete set, then you get an additional large bonus. Now, this takes all of the previous microtransaction stuff and puts it in the world for you to collect and equip. Now, overall, the game feels like this is how it should have launched. The world feels alive, it has tons to do, thanks to the events, the bosses, the secrets, roaming mobs, puzzles, character development feels worthwhile and meaningful, and the weapons are in a much better place than back when it was a live service game. Now, I truly hope this game gets a chance it deserves because it's incredibly fun. It's very addicting. It continues pulling me back in despite having other games available that I really want to play. So with all of that being said, I hope this has given you guys a little bit of an insight to what this update is bringing to the table and how much of an improvement it is over what we had 
previously. Hopefully I'll see you guys in Evanor on June 11th. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you guys next time.